when it's time for lunch, you can pick up a spoon or grab your fork buddy and dig into a Nuna. It's Nuna with Dan and Marty. If you never had a Nuna, well, there's no swim away. Just bend over at the middle in the middle of the day. It's a Nuna. It's a Nuna with Marty and Dan. Hey. Hi. Welcome to the Nooner Podcast on the Smart Go Internet Radio Network. I am a Merp and a host, and I'm here with another Merp and a host, John Sylvain. Hi, I'm a Merp and a host, and I'm here with another Merp and a host, Marty You. You're the most herpiest person. Her- 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 what? Uh, her- uh, Merpiest. Host- hostess. Herp. Huh? huh? You're the what? M- most herp. I think um, there's dog hair on my microphone. I w- tried to clean it, or but I... pubic hair. I tried to clean it with my balls. <laughs> How'd I, I do? You did great. You yeah. did great. Thank you. I got rid of all the dog hair. Yeah. Why is there dog hair on your balls? Not not uh, dog hair on the... Because I, I wiped it off with my balls. Oh, dog there's hair. no longer dog hair on your balls. No, no longer dog hair on the mic. On the mic, it's now under no. your balls? Uh, yes, and the the hair that, that you're pulling out of your teeth is my pubes. This is this are is, my pubes. Oh, great! This is good. We hey, everybody! A great start. Oh, I know. See, I, we Classy. take one week off. Like we're sporadic I now. Think it's and two weeks. Um, um. Yes, that's right. Yes. That's well. well we're no, old. We can't remember. I have no idea. Let, uh, let us know. Time goes faster for us because yeah, we're old. You can elderly. poke fun at us by saying hip things, making pop culture references that are from this millennium. Um, I have a whole Nooner podcast. It, 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 it relies on having Cassandra here, and she's not here. Nooner podcast at, uh, on the Twitter, and Nooner podcast at gmail.com. What was your thing, or do you want to save okay, it? I'm going to we'll save it for next week All right. if Cassandra shows up. But I just also think we should, as a public service to our listeners, we should say it's just Marty and I uh, for this podcast. So if you want to skip ahead to the next one, you can't because it's a live stream. Oh, for the if most, you want to go backwards, if you want, if you want, you know, Cassandra or Steve, you have to go back in time. Yeah. So Cassandra is is with her future in laws, I think. I don't know. Yeah, something like that. Well, she's in San Diego. Yeah. I guess that's private. She's somewhere south of here in a city that's it's named after a saint. <sighs> Yeah, and Steve is hard at work on Subterra. It turns out um, he's he's really. Working on basically a second job, getting that thing up and running. So really, yeah. he's trying to call, uh, correct all your uh, audio. Yep, That's, yep. So if time. you listen to it, it'll just sound like Steve, um, <laughs> and there'll be one one effort where I go, Ooh, "That's me," and the rest will be Steve. But the amazing thing is, he took your vocals and he and he went went to uh, premiere uh, and audio audition. audio audition and and uh, a whole bunch of different filters to make it sound exactly like him. Yeah, yeah. But the funny thing is, I still get paid the same amount. Yeah. How much? Um, so last week I was away. Yeah, no, where I, were you? Marty? I think I was. I think it's only been one that we missed. I, I, I don't know. It's so. Oh yeah, you're right. Because uh, I left that Thursday. No, you're right. To, it's only one. Yeah, I would left that Thursday to go to New Orleans because my. Okay, let's slow down. Slow. Down. So we're gonna we're gonna do uh, a a bit now. It's not a bit. This is this is a segment. This is this is. Um, Were you asked me what I where Hollywood? I was? This is Hollywood talk. So today on Hollywood talk, hi, I'm John Sylvain. Today on Hollywood talk, we're gonna be uh, talking to up and coming star Marty Yu. Uh, Marty, so, you just uh, got back from uh, New Orleans, as they say down there, uh, and you're working on a project. Uh, could you tell us about it? So my sister's directing a movie down there, and she. Um, you went to visit her. Yeah, I went to visit her. And your sister's name is uh, Jessica. She's an Oscar-winning fri- director. She's a friend of the show. She just sh- she's a friend of the show. Sh- I've never sh- seen sh- her. Sh- here. Sh- 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 I've met her once. So, we, what do you mean? You went to school with her? Uh, that, I, I went to I went to Timothy Dwight. Oh. I didn't go to Yale. Oh well, she was when she was in Pearson. She lived off campus. So. Yeah, They're, they lived on opposite ends of the the. Uh, the campus. She was there when I was there. You guys How, graduated uh, the same year. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. I did. I didn't know you in in college. Uh, no. Mm-mm. So how would I know her? Because she's she like a thousand year. people in each year. Oh my God, that's so many people. It is. It's a. Th- it's a lot, especially Whoa. when you go to. So, for those of you who care, does that, do you think anybody cares no, about the I don't think college cares system? About the college system. Okay. Yeah. And she lived off campus, so. Um, so did I, but I lived on campus. All right, all right. Nobody cares about this. Was she at the reunion that I just went to? 
Yeah, yeah. She she was right next to you. Uh, Jesus, why didn't she introduce herself? Well, she was shy. So anyhow, <laughs> my sister was is directing a movie. Jesus, that must uh, be hard to direct a movie and, and be and so stop. shy. Stop. Shut up, John. Just I'm trying you, to interview you. You asked a question, and you haven't let me answer it. You said, so oh, where were you? It's because it's, it's, it's the style of the show. No, it's your style, but it's not the style of the show. No, it is actually the style of the show. <laughs> Believe me, I, I've listened. Shut up. Okay. Okay, so you... Right, we'll you, see so you next tell us, uh, tell us about... No, uh, I've been I'm in the middle of telling you. Oh, I'm sorry. Don't, don't, I'm sorry. Don't tell us. Nobody wants to hear. No, so she she put me in a, a little tiny role. Tiny role. Yeah, and for a tiny actor. And uh, so, what kind of role? I was supposed Dinner to go there. Or? Okay, John. <laughs> seriously, like take your like if you're gonna make a joke, don't make it something that comes from a Dixie cup, okay? And don't make me explain to these young listeners what a Dixie cup is. Like, you're so proud of yourself right now. <laughs> you're so amused by yourself. This is hilarious. Yeah. I really like the Dixie Cup reference. Okay. So, uh, she, I, I was going to stay with her because uh-huh. they put her up in this you know, nice, like... Uh, uh, Best Western? No, it, it was a flat in the, in the garden district. And, you know, I walked in there and it smelled old and... Uh, Smell old? Yeah, that because good? it's like because it's like built in the 1800s, and it's oh. got these vaulted ceilings, and you know, it looks very, uh, I don't know, post antebellum or something like that. I don't know what I'm saying, but it, it mm. was cool looking. And then, so I'm unpacking, and then she calls, and she goes, "Oh, um, you got to leave now. I just tested positive for COVID, so what? You gotta? You, you she did? Yeah, she can't stay here. So I like pack up, and then I go like call the travel people and they put me up in this uh, a very fine Best residence in which is a uh, uh, part of That's the Marriott, step up Marriott group I'm a best western and they have uh, little kitchenettes and stuff like that mm-hmm. so it's you know right in, next to the french quarter and uh, i like hung out with the cast and and uh, met the producers really fun time uh, and then I, that was for the weekend. I had my fitting on Friday. Then I shot on Monday, mm-hmm. you know, super easy, sit in a truck and, you know, say my line and, um, what, what were your lines? Uh, line. Oh, your line. What was yeah, it? I, I'm contractually, uh, uh, limited from saying anything except for, um, you can't remember. I line. can't remember that line. No, I'm, I'm not allowed to say. But it's oh yeah. Yeah. You yeah. just have to sign an NDA. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. It's bad enough. Like if they find out I'm even talking about this. Well, they won't. So it's on this podcast. Yeah, exactly. So the next uh, morning, Tuesday morning, I wake up and I'm you know scheduled to leave and and I've got a, a sore throat. <clears throat> did you see your sister when she? Did she, uh, she. There are any number of vectors. So right now. BA5 is is the dominant variety of uh, or whatever um, flavor I like flavor to call. yeah yeah hue tin uh, the yes the the new hue of of uh, omicron and mm-hmm. it's wildly which is uh, the variant of covid-19 which yes. is uh, a, a coronavirus it's the variant of a coronavirus or a kind of coronavirus yes. which is a kind of virus mm-hmm. which is a kind of living organism so very, very specific. Very specific. And it's right now, it's 78% of the cases are that they've, uh, that they are recording right now are BA5. BA5, and, bingo. And it was, it's super virulent. And it, it, um, people who have had it Could before. Can you say that word again, please? Uh, people who've had it before nope. t- tend to get it again. And, um, and going there, it was like the going from, LA to New Orleans, it's like there was no health issue at all. Like there were no one, maybe 10%, less than, fewer than 10% of the people were, uh, less than 10% were wearing masks. Yeah. How about you? I was wearing masks the whole time. I was yeah. so paranoid. Sure. And then also being around the actors, like cause they don't want, the, if they get. You don't, um, you don't work. Yeah. They shut down everything. But your, your sister was continuing to direct? Uh, not like they they had. She was completely isolated. So, 
Uh, the day I was working, she so was... So she screamed cut from no, like miles I, away? No, I'm sitting in the truck and all of a sudden I hear this bzz, bzz, and it's my sister calling me and she's like, okay, this time lean out a little <laughs> further and, and really, Jesus. really give it to him. Like, all right, great. Yeah. <laughs> it's so weird. You? Yeah. And she's like sitting in a, this field like in a... Uh, in the middle of like a super hot July New Orleans day in, in an air-conditioned Accord. And meanwhile, she's surrounded by all these like sweaty camera people just running up and down, hauling shit. And she's like, do, 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 do. I mean, frankly, I was doing the same thing. I was sitting in my truck. and Yeah. Um, uh, but then, of course, I ended up getting COVID. Mm-hmm. And so then I'm with faced with this thing of like, okay, I'm scheduled to go home. I should just... You know, um, I'm done with all my work and I should just hop on the plane. But then I'm thinking, okay, well, I don't want to get other people sick. And so I should just do protocol. And I yeah. and I call the, the COVID health safety person and they're like, okay, well, you can't go until you clear. Mm-hmm. And so I was scheduled to leave like Tuesday or Wednesday, ended up staying till Sunday, trapped in a hotel room. Uh-huh. Uh, in New Orleans, which is, you know, a bit of a sort of existential journey. Yeah, you know? so you were in New Orleans. Yes. The the food and party capital of the United States, mm-hmm. and you were in a residence inn. Yes, and I got some food from the supermarket, and like I said, oh, I'll get a frozen pizza. And then I like open it up, and I'm like, oh, wait, this kitchenette is just a stovetop and a microwave. Ah, uh, so I was like, "All right, well, it's got a pan, so I just cooked it up in a in a nonstick pan, like a slice of pizza." Um, How did that work out? Did it, it unfreeze? Oh yeah, if you oh, okay. if you if you apply heat to anything frozen, basically it will. Oh, it will I didn't unfreeze. learn that in New Hampshire. Yeah, yeah, and uh, but anyhow, you you make do, and it was fine. Well, yeah. What what uh, what brand was it? It was a tombstone. Tombstone? Yeah. yeah. You like tombstone? N- no, no, I no. don't like tombstone. But what, I uh, needed to eat something. Yeah. And so yeah, I didn't. It was not the most ideal thing in, in the world to to be. Not, not so uh, place. how was uh, how was the COVID? I've never had it. <laughs> Come here. No, no, just don't <sighs> get your no, no, please. We're sharing. No, no, we're not. No, yeah. no get away. No, the country, no, you're a little I'm, bit rock no, and I'm gonna, no, I'm a little bit COVID. You're a little bit rock and roll. I am, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I was okay. I had two bad days. If anybody out there, like, I don't think, I, I think I'm the last person who hasn't had COVID. Yeah, I think you are. Uh, there, there were two bad days and then it was basically fine. You know, how bad were the bad days? Not not so bad, just achy, sweaty, but um, like no congestion. Did you did you really we'll feel s- like you're uh, subject to some uh, liberal hoax? Completely, yeah, completely, yeah. And I came out the other side with uh, a Glenn Beck tattoo on my chest. I don't know where that came from, but oh, I know where it came from. COVID. No, I came over there. I tattooed oh, on your thanks, chest. Thanks. Uh, yeah. So anyhow, it was it was fun. I mean. That part of um, just shooting and being on set and, and stuff like that—I've never flown in anywhere to be in a to, for an acting job. That was really fun. Mm-hmm. Um, did you fly first class? I yes, but you did uh, yes, yeah. That's nice. Yeah, never flown first class before. I, I've never flown first and class, and it was you know slightly better than like. If you go to Europe, then like that first class is like crazy where they have like these little beds that you, you know, you, you saw it when, didn't you see when you went to England? Did I see it? Yeah. I saw yeah. The, 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 yeah, the people better than me. Yeah. How they were sitting down. Yeah. Yeah. I saw it. And then. I longed for yeah. their lives. Yeah. This one was I just, lingered as long as I could. Uh, these seats, I wished I was them. These I'm sorry. seats were maybe two, two inches wider and two, two inches more of, of. Legroom, which I will gladly take, but it was not anything like going to Europe in one of those pods, those sleep yeah, pods. Yeah. So that yeah, was fine. It was great. I have no complaints at all. Um, though it, it it's not super fun being sick like that. And it's not super fun then waiting for 
you know, to be released out of this like purgatory. So, what's this movie? Can you tell us the movie or uh, no? Is it's, it secret? No, you. I mean, you, anybody can look it up on IMDb. It, well, I, I I'm not gonna because I don't believe in technology. How about you tell me about it? Oh, uh, um, wait, you're, you're on a podcast. Oh, <laughs> oh I shoot! Am? I did, I forgot. Wait, I wait. never told you that we were doing that stick that you were talking to is a microphone. The one um, that's covered with your pubic hair. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was something else. <laughs> no, sorry. Uh, I thought yeah. this was a dildo. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I sticking a microphone on my, on my butt? That's a waste of a microphone. Um, the, I bet this is this is like foreplay for two years. Yeah. So Sandra, Sandra O, oh and Aquafina play uh, sisters in this. Uh huh. Um, yeah, and it's that's it. That's all you need to know. That's really, all you right? need to know, and that's it's all you need to know. It's a very funny script. And you know, I can't really speak to the movie, not done yet, um, but it's a very funny script and they're two very, very funny people, yeah. uh, actors. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, I'm... I, I thought, you know, when I saw Sandra O oh and Arliss, I thought, <laughs> that girl is going places because she's the only person who can act on this entire show. Uh, she's she's great. She's a fantastic actress, I think. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I don't think... People realize how funny she is because she did so spent so much time on Grey's Anatomy, where it's like so. Oh, well, she's hilarious on on, uh, on Grey's Anatomy. Was she? Yeah. Did you ever watch it? Uh, no. The only the episodes you were on. Didn't even watch those. Yeah. No. no. It's it's it was oh. pretty funny. Oh, it's, you know, okay. it's still on. But uh, yeah, it's still on. Isn't that amazing? Jeez, it's incredible. Ellen Pompeo is a great great grandmother. Oh yeah, yeah. But um, she's just like, can I get another job? They say, no, it's named after you. We brought in uh, your sister, and that didn't work out. And so you're just going to have, she died. Everybody, every, she's like, everybody has died. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. just, it's Everybody's sort of like, a, yeah. anyway, it's like a soap opera. It's like, like a, a soap it's opera? Like a so- wow, well, that's really insightful of you. Uh, I don't know how you drew I that. Uh, where'd you, where'd you get that from? Huh. Hmm. So, uh, and then Aquafina is just, I, is, hilarious as well and she's very talented um and also super super nice so, so they're uh, both super nice people it seems it seems to, i'm just wondering if if, if it's sandra oh seems like somebody who is um very very well very talented but also very very well trained yeah and aquafina seems like just a naturally charismatic person i mean she was fantastic in everything she's been in but she's and she's great in the farewell mm-hmm so I don't know. I mean, it, it seems maybe I, I, I would I, at least my first thought was that there that that Sandra O oh would have to sort of perform to Aquafina's lead because she can, whereas Aquafina can't. Like, but then I look at the farewell and I think, no, that was a dumb thing to say. It wasn't, it wasn't a dumb thing to say. I think that she did get classically trained as an actress, uh, as an actor, Sandra did. Yeah. And, and she, you know, she went to drama school and, uh, Aquafina did not, but Aquafina is, has a history as a performer and then she's done three seasons of her own TV show. Yeah. Have you watched that? Uh, no, I have not. I haven't, I haven't heard anything about it. I've heard nothing but good things. Yeah. I should watch but, it cause I'm a fan, but it just seems uh, like there's a lot of content out there. Yeah. And then she's, R R R. we should talk about R R R. Did you watch it? Oh, uh, no. Oh. Did you? Yes. Did you like it? I, I've, I never enjoyed um, uh, nationalist, fascist, uh, homoerotica more. That dance scene is pretty awesome, though. Everything about it is awesome. Okay. I really yeah. enjoyed the hell out of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But it's totally like, it's, it's, a, it's like, you know what we should do? We should kill all the people who aren't us. That's what we should do. Yes. Well, that's why it's the number one movie in India, you know? Uh, yeah, you know, interesting. It's not a Bollywood film, actually. No, it's from uh, Telugu, right? Or yeah, it, yeah, Telugu. Not no. it's not in Hindi, and uh, it's uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, but it it is super well done. You oh can yeah, watch the. Uh, it's got tons of animals, and all the animals are digitally created. Like, yeah, even the horses. It's it's pretty amazing. I don't know if all the horses. Are not all the horses, crazy. maybe, but but anytime there's anything stunt worthy, yeah. you know. Uh, and you can watch a stint. Uh, the breakdown of it it's on online it's really pretty pretty impressive stuff yeah it's really it's great it's it doesn't stop yeah and those two guys are like oozing with charisma charisma and and other things yeah like 
well, like sexuality. Mm. And they're both like in incredible shape. And they're yeah. very, 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 very handsome. And I, I question a lot of the choices that I've made over my life in the course of in the three hours it took to watch that movie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's an epic. Totally an epic. So, uh, but yeah, I think that Aquafina is a genuinely good actress. So I think she, she has earned her chops. It's kind of like when you, I just remember watching the pilot for Friends and thinking like th- these people, like, especially like Jennifer Aniston, just, I thought she was not that impressive. But then if you are doing that same character and you're acting and you're working timing for nine seasons or however long it went, like, uh, you get better, you know? Yeah. And that's such a privilege to, to have. Yeah. And when you have, uh, Phoebe, what was Phoebe's name? We'll never know. What was, what was, no, come on, come on. What was her name? Sharon? No, the the Phoebe character, the the actor who played Uh, Phoebe. Greeby? Jesus Christ. And Matthew, Matt, Matt LeBlanc and Matthew Perry. Lisa Kudrow. Lisa, Matthew LeBlanc, Matt LeBlanc, Matthew Perry, and Lisa Kudrow are comic geniuses. David Schwimmer is David Schwimmer. Courtney Cox is Courtney Cox. And Jennifer, I mean, they they brought the hot. David Swimmer and the other two ladies I just mentioned. But I think that Jennifer Aniston did get a lot better. Oh, no, she's she's great. She's, yeah. I'm just, yeah. But I, I think, I think I mean, I think Matthew Perry is fucking genius and Lita Crudo is a genius. I think Matt LeBlanc is a genius. And I think Matt LeBlanc, I said, I think I said that first. Okay. Yeah, okay. I, just I, so I agree uh, it's with established. You. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What happened? I agree with you. Holy smoke. Okay, God. All right. Good run. Gotta go. <laughs> So anyhow, uh, look for it. it. It'll come out next year. What's it year. called? Does it have a name? No, it does not have a name. It right doesn't now. have a name? Sa- if you look it up, Aquafina? If you look it up on IMDb, it's Untitled Sister is Project. There, is there actually Sisters a... Sister's Project. Is there actually a script or do they just say Sandra O and Aquafina? Untitled Sister's Project. They, un, unscripted. They just nope, said, let's put them together. The script is called If we get Marty U, we get we Marty Sisters U one Project. line. No, and, and then John. We have Sandra it's O... Un, the script is called Untitled Sisters Project. Yeah, I don't think they need a script. I just I, I think but they, they have one. They do. Yeah, yeah. Did you see it? Remember when I said I read it? No. Okay. I, I, I you said you really had funny. a line. I said I don't. All right. Well, well you can. When you did can you say you it. read it? You can listen back and and, and listen back to what? Oh, you know the the dildo cast. Oh, that's right. Oh, this so, is a microphone. Yeah. Does that mean people can hear me if I whisper? Nope. No. So, how are you, John? What did you do with your week off the podcast? Because I know you only don't do anything except wait to do this podcast. I, I, was, uh, I, I stayed uh, in exactly the same position. Uh, I did not move for two weeks. And um, waiting for uh, waiting for this podcast. Wow. Impressive. Yeah. And it was it was gross. I I mean I you know it was don't, it was don't need to know the gross part. Yeah. Okay. But I didn't move at all. No, I've been I've actually I'm very I have three jobs and uh, I'm working, doing editing and I'm working at my corporate job uh, where I watch sports for a living and uh, and then I'm teaching teaching uh, teaching ended uh, for the summer. Uh huh. So I've got a month off from teaching. I'm teaching again in live students. Just as the as the COVID wave just crests, I'm going to go back live in front of 150 people. Mm-hmm. See if I can, can still maintain my, uh, my COVID free status. Okay. I am legend. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I've I've been I've been pretty busy. What are you editing? Oh, I'm editing stuff for International Medical Corps. Oh, okay. International Medical Corps is... Uh, let me just give a little plug for International Medical Corps. Please, please. International Medical Corps um, has been around since uh, 1985, I think. And um, what they do is they send uh, doctors and nurses to crisis places. Um, and they have they're right now they're in 30 countries around the world. And uh, they... Help people who are uh, in, you know, there's a lot of people in Ukraine right now and in Afghanistan for the earthquake. And um, they 
uh, you know, uh, South Sudan and uh, uh, DRC. They have they they have Ebola clinics and um, they've been to Haiti a bunch of times. And what they do is they go in and they help people in 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 the crisis. But they always leave the medical infrastructure better off than they found it. That's the other thing that they're very well mm-hmm. known for. And they, they do amazing they, work. They and update all the People magazines on the table in front. Yeah. And, and yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, they Refill don't... Refill the lollipops for the children. Yeah. That's great. All the important stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So that's what they do. That's cool. It's just basically international candy stripers. Okay. And then what, what do you have to edit for them? Uh, I'm editing like videos about people, about their work, interview people, about the dogs in in uh, different places. Mm. Humphrey, Humphrey, uh, cool. Yeah, I, I was just working on a, a project with uh, where uh, one of the one of the things that's interesting is, um, or that I just sort of learned from editing this project is, or. It's kind of obvious, but, you know, one of the most important aspects of health is mental health. What? Yeah. So it turns out that when, you know, there's an earthquake and like a a thousand people die or if there's a war and a whole bunch of people get hurt and shot, it also impacts people's mental health. Who to thunk it? So that's a very important part of uh, the relief. Um, But uh, it's not a lot. It's not really that. Funny. Hi. Um, so I'm uh, Marty. Went to he's Marty's. Uh, Marty's Nobody back. Nobody cares. I've been listening the whole time. Well, I I didn't know what else to say. I, I'm not a well, good you're, monologist. You were saying the importance of mental health. Yeah, yeah, it's important. Uh, it's so you know they they and do it, a lot of psychosocial uh, services for people because people are are going through terrible crises and 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 all, all the other thing that's that's interesting that you don't think about is that even though there's a war going on and all of the the healthcare system which is pretty robust in ukraine um is completely devastated on the um east side of the country where Mm -hmm. you know russia has been bombing hospitals and and uh people can't get to work and so the, the the there's 15 million people um have left their homes. Uh, about seven million have left the country, and eight million are in different parts of the the country. And and so the the uh, healthcare system on the west side of the country, which is relatively conflict free, mm-hmm. is completely overwhelmed. And it's not just I mean it's not gunshot wounds and, and stuff like that. It's people who had diabetes still have diabetes. People who had high blood pressure right, still have high right. blood pressure. People, Just regular health care. Yeah, kids, kids still fall out of trees and get right. born and, you know, right. and there's the, there's not hey, children, places for that's them. that's where babies come from. They fall out of trees. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yep. That's exactly right. That's what, uh, that's where I got my kid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so if you can, uh, you know, well, uh, what send do they money, do? send it to IMC. Okay. And uh, what makes them different from um, uh, Médecins Sans Frontières? Well, for one thing, there's two things that make them different from Doctors Without Borders. First of all, International Medical Corps is based in Los Angeles okay. rather than France. So it's run by Americans. So it's better that way. And then the other thing... Yeah, healthcare by Americans is notoriously great. Oh, they, actually, famously they, do a, they do a good job. Okay. But um, it is... I mean, it's pretty good if you can afford if it. If you can afford it, yeah. <laughs> You are correct. Um, and uh, the other thing is that they tend to be less political. So, like the way I characterize it, and this is, I'm I don't work for them. I, I do contract work for them. Mm-hmm. So don't quote me. <laughs> don't 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 record this or anything. But uh, Doctors Without Borders tends to um, go into a place and say, "Hey, warlords, you shouldn't be hurting these people." And uh, international medical courses, "Hey, uh, we're just gonna." Her, fix this fix leg. Fix this leg. Yeah, yeah. It, you do whatever you want. Yeah. So they they tend to be able to go historically to some places that Doctors Without Borders can't go because they're because they're French, basically. Mm, French. Uh, and I can say that because I'm French. Mm, you're Acadian. Acadian. Yeah, I'm uh, Quebecois. Yeah. So they. Um, 
they I understand that there's a huge rivalry and if they see each other in the same country like at the airport they just spit at each other and it's like oh hey if they pull hey, up Pierre, their hold me back hold me back they pull up their scalpels they, I'm going to, they operate on the nearest person yeah. as fast as they can where's my scalpel I'm going to slash the LA poser no they don't attack each other they they do they do elective surgery on whoever's closest oh I see so in the airport it's a really good idea not to be nearby because you might get a facelift a fast one uh, without anesthesia. I was about to say I'm I'm on my way to the airport. Mm, yeah, it's you know it, it's uh, painful to recover from a facelift. Yeah, but believe me, I know. But the results, right. the results speak for themselves. I'm actually 80 years old. Uh, JP says that he enjoys um, Norin from Queens, the Aquafina show. Yeah, helped fill the gap after Broad City ended. Had a, has a similar vibe. Cool to see yet, see yet another side of BD Wong. Another oh, is BD Wong in it? No, I don't know why he would mention that though. <laughs> but uh, you mean he's does he's done other work other than Jurassic Park movies? Yeah, he's done lots of work. Oh, he was in um, what was that one? And Butterfly. Uh, and Butterfly. He was in that one with uh, uh, Kid and Play. <laughs> House Party was he in House? Party? I think he was in House Party Two. Oh. I think. But, I, I didn't realize it was a house party too. I missed it. Yeah, did that come out last year? Long uh, right after no, t- Top Gun Maverick came out in 1991. <laughs> Silly. He was also he was also one of the lawyers on on one of the Law and Orders. I think. There you go. See, more has been around. Tons. Yeah, yeah. Um, I yeah. no, he wasn't a lawyer. He was like the psychiatrist or something. Okay. I think he's he's on special victims unit. Oh, S- uh, SBU. Nice. Uh, I don't know what that made me think of Bill, but I also heard from uh, Bill Watterson. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Is yeah. he going to go back to doing Calvin and Hobbes? Uh, well, that's, he's never heard that joke before. That's funny. Uh, he actually did a show. I've never film. made that joke before. Oh. So pardon me for stepping on your hallowed toes. Not my hallowed toes. His hallowed toes, but I would change my name if I if I were named Calvin or Hobbes. He did a, a little short film that I, he showed me, and mm. it was really it was really good. And in fact, he made a Bill Watterson joke in it. So there you go. Oh, good. Yeah, he should be making movies. Uh, well, he, he, I mean, he just did. No, I mean, but other people should pay for it. Is what I'm saying. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's his name? Uh, who made a maze? What's it called? Uh, Lisa Kudrow made a maze. Yeah. Oh, wow, your brain is um, did he, shrinking. Did he? They, Bill, Bill, Bill did. They made a maze, right? Am I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's one of the most brilliant movies I've ever seen. Oh, don't you think? Uh, yeah, it's really cool. It's really cool, yeah. and it's it's it's. I mean, it suffers from a lack of. Uh, a, la- a lack of dogs. Sorry, I just made a huge racist error. I m- mis- mix- mixed up B.D. Wong with Getty Watanabe. Uh, really? Yeah, he, he was in one of the House Party movies, I think. Um, but um, Wow. Yeah, really, really embarrassing. So, uh, B.D. I wouldn't Wong, have admitted that if I were you. Yeah, B.D. Wong was in um, The Freshman and Father of the Brides 1 and 2. Oh, yeah, I can. Well, it's a, similar, probably, similar character. Yeah, House Party and Father of the Bride are practically the same movie. Well, it's a similar character, very sort of effete. And a effete Asian guy. <laughs> Why is that funny? Because you confuse them. Oh, now I'm in trouble. I can't say anything. Cis white male. Oh, again. As many as many people would say, I've had my chance. Uh, sorry about these dogs. I don't know what they're going on about. There's, uh, there's a murderer at your front door. Oh, well. That's what they just told me. I speak dog. Yeah. So, uh, anyhow, did you enjoy the rest of Ms. Marvel? Uh, yeah, I really enjoyed Ms. Marvel. I don't think it was very well... I, I, it could have been better done. I really think that uh, if if that young woman who played Kamala Khan... I don't know, I don't remember her name. She, she's a, she's uh, wonderful. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, if it's really true that she'd never acted before, it's it's an amazing find that she's actually she's actually the fan girl that she plays, and she does such a wonderful job. 
all the cast did a really good job. I just, I think it might be a combination of, I think that they, they seem to like rush the script. They didn't think about it very much. It seems like not very well. I don't know what the story is. Well, uh, the the bad guys were, the, the motivation was, was f- foggy at, mo- at best. And, and the action sequences were just like, it's time to have a fight and, and a, and a, 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 a chase scene through Karachi and it's like, why? Why are they chasing them? And why aren't the 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 Celestines, which are the bad guys? Spoiler alert! Why, why are they? Do they have power? And they? Why are they just swing? Why are they trying I, to kill people? That's how I feel about it too. But it it was so visually well done. I thought um, a lot of it was. And yeah, some of it was. Yeah. Like yeah. the first episode, I thought I didn't. They didn't live up to that kind of visual, whimsy. Yeah. Visual whimsy. Yeah. And then, like, the action scenes were just kind of mm, not super engaging. I think it was going for a dim- different demographic. I think it was going for a younger, you know, sort of preteen girl demographic. Well, I, I can, I can, I think that's a, I think that's an excuse for doing shoddy work. I think you, like, I okay. enjoy lots of things that are for kids. Like? Well, uh, like Star Wars. Okay. Like, you know. It's pretty shoddy work in that. Um, I guess I was a kid when Star Wars came out. Yeah. So, um, I I mean I I like I like the, like there's a lot of superhero movies that are are really good that I that I liked. Yeah. And I thought that Thor, Love and Thunder was a blast. Uh huh. Um, did you see that? I did. Did you like it? I did. I yeah. did. I didn't. I wasn't quite as engaged as I was in other ones because, uh, I, again. <sighs> The story wasn't. Well, I guess it was. It, it the story seemed superfluous. It it seemed less um, uh, about. Uh, it was less engaging for Thor Thor's character. You know, it's just like something's coming after him as opposed to him going after something. You know. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Know, That's uh, but I I he was you know I I I agree with you uh, because he, uh, but I thought that uh, Taiko Waititi was. Um, consciously making fun of superhero movies while making a pretty darn good superhero movie. How how was he making fun of it? I'm, I'm just Well, curious. he uh the like the fights were were really fun but they called attention to the fact that they were fighting. The entire sort of uh prelude or or preface, mm. you know, with the Guardians of the Galaxy that that was Why hilarious. Were you even there? Well, yeah. it was just a really funny goofy yeah, and and the screaming goats. I mean, just oh, the, the random. That was really funny. Yes, and and he was. I mean, Chris Hemsworth is just a funny guy to watch. I like. Yeah, I really enjoy watching him. And I really, I you know, I really like the part where his clothes came off. Mm-hmm. Wow, you're really <laughs> learning a lot about yourself between RRR and uh, Hemsworth bare bottomed. Yeah, <laughs> and the dildo up your ass. Yeah, it's all coming together. Yeah, at the same time. Wow. I'm, I'm very you know impressed. What I mean. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. This, you've heard it here first, folks. Yeah, this is a, a breakthrough episode. Yeah, I'm coming out. Uh, I'm so coming. Did you watch it out. with your child? Yes. Did your child? What did your child think of it? Uh, we all liked it. We all had a really good time. That's good. We didn't. Uh, I guess there's. I mean, I, I guess there's a lot of haters out there for both projects. I think if Miss Marvel is getting hate because of um, because there's a person ra- of color, a, yeah. a girl of color in it. Yeah. Imagine think, that. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's stupid. Imagine Stanley I mean, there's so supporting many, there's something. There's a lot like of that. other reasons not to like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, just press rewind to hear John's analysis. Of yeah, it. but um, but I, you know, I I thought that was the best part of it. I I was I was I was disturbed by the fact that her parents find out that she's risking her life as a superhero, and they go, "We're so proud of you." <laughs> it was like she's 16. Yeah, they sh- and they're 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 immigrant parents of any stripe or parents of any stripe. They should lock her up in a closet. Yeah, take away her bangle. Yeah, not not written by parents of teenagers. I don't no. Think. Yeah, but um, I did like uh, Natalie Portman. I thought she acquitted herself well as a superhero. Oh, that was fun. That yeah. whole thing was fun, and yeah. Valkyrie was fun. And she's uh, great. Tessa Thompson's awesome. And what's his name? Uh, Taika Waititi's rock character mm-hmm. Gorp. <laughs> Yeah, Gorp. No, no, it's it's Lisa Kudrow is his character's name. So Korg is Cor. I think Gorp is a better name. 
All right, for yeah. something you're gonna nosh on on the trail, yeah, maybe yeah. the screaming goats. I could, I could, yeah. could, that was the best thing. Oh my I god! Sh- I think they should have had more. But screaming the funny goats. thing is, those goats, uh, maybe not screaming so much, but they existed in the comic. And, yeah, and well, it felt like a comic book. Yeah, and you know. I, all the logic of it. Yeah, I felt it felt very comic like. I, it was a lot of fun. And then while I was uh, on the way there to New Orleans, on the way back, I was reading um, on. Uh, I got from the library the the John Byrne she uh, I think it's spectacular She Hulk I think oh yeah yeah which is also really fun yeah because it's very very self referential he she uh, She Hulk is ref- breaking the fourth wall the whole time uh huh and like John Byrne is one of my favorite artists from the eighties yeah and and very, I, very good artist yeah very clean and, yes and apparently he worked very fast and that was the reason why he was so. Uh, successful and and prolific because oh. he, they wanted to hire him because he could he could draw just draw very quickly uh and he wrote those books yeah. too which is like really impressive so. yeah but clap on clap off no it doesn't did not clap off yeah but uh yeah i recommend those books are because uh, i wanted to get in the mindset of what's coming up with um you know, in the next uh, show to come out. I think it's in August, right? Isn't that when She-Hulk comes out? Yeah, I think August 22nd. Oh. Not that I, like, memorize these things. Not like that it's tattooed on your inner wrist. Freaky geek. Yeah. But uh, what's her name? Ta- ta- Tatian- Ta- Tatiana Kudrow? Yeah, Tatiana Kudrow. She's awesome. She yeah. she When she was doing Orphan Black, she should have gotten all the Oscar nominations for every character. It's crazy how talented she is. Yeah, you totally forget that there's she's playing... In a scene with herself as different people, and in all, throughout the entire thing. So not only did she have to act like a, in each of those roles, like there's a one where it's like five or six of them, the clones. This is from Orphan Black. If mm-hmm. you don't know what we're talking about, she plays the the clone. Uh, there are like six of them like dancing together in a room, and you're like, okay, well she had to do multiple takes six times, and then they had to plot everything out so that. Like, so from the effects angle, they, yeah. everything was perfect. And then when she had to act with herself and have these dramatic things, it's like so, the it seamless. must have been exhausting. Though. Yeah. Yeah. She's incredible. Yeah. And she, from all the interviews I've heard, she sounds really And uh, I think it seems like She-Hulk is a really great character. Uh, and um, it looks it looks good. I hope that, I hope, I, I just feel like the, the Marvel things have gotten into a, uh, it's a little bit of a, the formula of a comic book. I mean, a comic book's twenty used to be twenty two pages, and mm. you had to have at least one battle with the supervillain in each monthly episode. Uh-huh. And so, I don't think the, they have to do that anymore. They have a rich enough universe. You know, they could have. They don't have to have a big battle or big chase scene right. in every episode. She Hulk takes the bar. Yeah. Yeah, I guess oh, I'm sorry. Maybe. She was already a lawyer when she got the transfusion. No, but it could be a flashback. Oh yeah, all right. But then she wouldn't be She-Hulk. But you could do a whole episode where she just studies for the studies bar. Studies for the bar. It's like a stress. Yeah, yeah. Or, or um, Jennifer Walters is that? There? Yeah, yeah, Jennifer Walters. Jennifer. Jessica or Jennifer? Jennifer. Jessica. Jessica Walters. Yeah. yeah. Oh no, that's the actress, isn't it? Jessica Walters. Yeah. I don't know. But don't anyhow, know. she does a deposition of like a yeah. Uh, of, for for a big corporate case, yeah, right, right, just some and corporate the, litigation. And the whole thing is that's funny. Is it's a really boring case. It's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. It's like listening to the podcast, and nobody wants to be there. That would be <sighs> great. And there's no fighting at all. Mm-hmm. And then at the end, she turns into She Hulk because no, she well, she became permanently She Hulk at some point. Uh, you, you think that's going to happen? Well, in the comic book, she did. Yeah, I know. But do you think that's going to happen in the... I don't know. Tune in and find out. August 22nd, everybody, Disney Plus. Talk you, to your local how cable mu- how provider. Much, uh, how much are you getting paid for this ad? How much are we getting paid? Oh, wow. Yeah, Same how much as usual. We... Same as usual. That's my uh, symbol <clears throat> for nothing. <clears throat> oh. Uh, and you Hi, did... my name is... <clears throat> you didn't watch The Boys, though, right? No, I haven't. I haven't gone back to watching the boys. I've been watching uh, only murders in the building. Oh, that old, which is old, kind of, old people. Yeah, TV. it's very much very reassuring and mm. uh, 
just watching Martin Short overact is just a pleasure. I could, I he he's definitely I, a joy to watch. Yeah, well, I wouldn't say joy. It's more. It's it is more for like me. Uh, it's. Uh, uh, but uh, and then uh, started watching the Bear. Have you watched oh, the Bear? Cougar sh- was telling me to watch the Bear. You, you Lisa. Yeah, Lisa. Cougar? Yeah, Phoebe was telling me. You would. I think you would really like the Bear because you're a foodie. You don't have to point at me. I'm, I'm I not, do have I'm to not. point at you because you might not know I'm talking to you. <laughs> If I don't point the at The room you. is very full of things that you could be talking to. That's right. Most of the time, I do this entire conversation to one of those plants over there. Mm. No. Okay. Yeah. I'll watch it. What have, have you seen anything good? Uh, you know, we've been watching Barry, and, and we're behind. Right? Oh, I'm totally behind on Barry. Yeah. Like I said, you know, when they killed off the cop, spoiler alert. Wait. I'm still watching it. Like, behind. When, that means I'm You're not way up behind? to date. Yeah, that that was like. Do you mean years from the first ago. season? Yeah. Oh, oh. oh yeah. <laughs> that's all, that's why I start. I liked her so much. Yeah, Paula Newsom. Oh, uh, she was such a great character, and I was totally rooting for we the fawns and the the cop. But uh, we did a commercial together, me and her. Oh, you did? Yeah, she was. Did she did she die in the commercial too? Or yeah. Is it? I I took her out to the woods, and all you what see. What was the commercial for? Firearms? <laughs> no, yeah, Rem- Colt Colt forty five. Yeah. Works Malt every time. And a, a malt liquor and a pistol. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, she was she was really cool. But uh, and then season two uh, that we are we are in the middle of, like which John, I haven't watched. Oh, but you can spoil it for me. Go oh, ahead. No, John Piricello has a great part in it. He's he's just is John Pir- Piricello, awesome. the, the the bald guy. No. no, no. Who's John Piricello? He he plays the partner, the cop partner, and he used to be on the podcast. He was on the podcast for a while with the mustache. Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, he he's he's great on it, and it's so fun to see someone you know like just in such a great great role. Excellent. So, yeah, it yeah. is really hard though because every acting class I've ever been in was almost exactly like that, except there was no murder, you know, assassin in, as a fellow uh, cast or whatever classmate, uh-huh. like. I've been in those valley you, so theaters. So that's that's your. You didn't go to the right ones. You want to go to one where somebody gets murdered. Seriously, but that that like every, you know, valley theater, every valley storefront that they convert at night to a theater or whatever. It's like it's like that. It, it was, uh, and then the actors are like that too. I'm I'm sure I I was like that as well. And it's it, so it's a little hard for me to watch the acting scene parts because it's like triggering. it really is like that. Uh yeah yeah very similar. Hmm. Yeah. I'm glad I avoided that. Yeah. Well, I'm you, just a natural. You arrived as a seasoned professional. Yeah. When you hit, when you hit the ground running here in yeah. L.A. Yeah. 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 So, but I should <clears throat> go back to acting. Yeah. Yeah, because it's so much. It's so easy. Oh yeah. You just the. It, it is weird though thinking like, okay this. Like I'm having this conversation with, with whatever uh, Sandra, you know, and like in this one movie, she, she'll make like more than I'll make in years, you know. And yeah. It's just so such a weird thing. Just go and like sort of make believe, and then all of a sudden you're just like flush with cash, and it's like it is. It looks easy for sure. But. Well, it. I mean, yeah, it's very difficult to be successful at it, but I find it for me when I've done it, it's just. Getting the job is the hard part. Doing the job is kind of fun. Oh yeah, completely. And 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 usually pretty easy. I mean, it takes a lot of concentration. Yeah. Um, not to like belittle it, but you know, you have to pretend that you're somewhere else. I mean, the, you, no, I think you're right. The real job is getting the job. Yeah. And and having to have that maintain that focus and that sense of purpose and uh, and confidence and as you go through meetings and auditions and all that stuff and, and really having a good game plan, things I ne- just never was good at, you know. I was a, a, a guy I went to school with. Um, he lives in uh, Italy. And uh, I think a friend of a friend or a daughter of a friend um, just finished law school and has decided that she wants to become an actor. Oh. And so he said... Will you talk to her? No, he show her no. your car. I, 
I, I'm not an actor. If I if I was an actor, I'd have a much worse car. Um, and I have a terrible car. My she uh, she finished law school and she has decided that she wants to be an actor. And his question to me was, what drama schools would I recommend? And uh, it was funny because my reaction at first was, I don't really know from drama schools uh, the the difference between. And then I sort of stopped and I thought. What? Okay, so if she wants to be an actor, going to drama school after you finish law school is ridiculous. I mean, yeah. if you if you were uh, if you already had some a little success, or or if you were coming out of high school, maybe I think I think drama school is a. I mean, it, it's worked out for a number of people, but I I think it's kind of crazy. How, how do you mean? Well, it's. I, I the people that I've met who've gone to drama school, I can, I don't go. Oh yeah, they're much better than the people who didn't. You know, like the people who went away and came back to drama school from like, drama school, like Paul Giamatti. Like Paul Giamatti. Paul Giamatti was that good yeah. before he went to drama yes. school, and so were the other people that I know who went to, to drama school at the same time. Right. They were all very very good, and they came back. Very, very good. Nobody went in raw yeah. and came out a, a, a polished diamond. They went. They went. They went. They came back. You know what? Twelve hundred and twenty thousand uh, dollars less rich, but with better connections. Yeah, and, and know, a lot of work under your belt. You know, a lot of work in, 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 and you have something on your resume. Yeah, but you could also in those two years, like you know, I got here and I got into film school, and um, uh, Rob. Uh, a couple people who went to film school said, "Don't do that. Don't go to film school. Don't don't take that money and make a film. It's not worth it because you what you'll get out of it is connections. And you already have connections. Mm. And um, and so I did, and I made a terrible film, and I'm really glad that I didn't go to film school. Right, right. Um, although now I now now I think I would make a better film, and maybe if I'd learned how to do that in film school, maybe it would have made a difference. But I kind of doubt it based on." the output of some of the people who have gone to film school. But anyway, what I told him, what I told my friend uh, to tell her was go to either L.A. or Chicago, take take improv classes, take acting classes, and try to audition for things. And that's what you should do. And if you find that you love what you're doing and you get some success, maybe then consider going to, to, uh, to drama school. Uh, maybe. Maybe. But she thought that she could kind of, there was some kind of process where she could leap ahead because she felt like she was behind. Because she has a JD. Because she has a JD and she uh, has an Italian accent and her English isn't that great. I mean, it's just the, the, the mindset is like wow, very, uh, you know, it's just magical thinking. It's like, yeah. you know what I want to do? I want to be an actor. How do you go about doing that? Well, unlike almost everything else, uh, not really, well, unlike a lot of other jobs, like, for instance, being a lawyer, um, there is no path to success that if you step on it, you need to have uh, talent and you need to have luck and you need to have connections. Yeah. And if you stick around uh, and work at it long enough, there's like a people make it in Hollywood, make a living in Hollywood. It takes 10 years. Like, if you're a screenwriter, you can write, sit in a room and write 20 screenplays. If yeah. you're an actor, you can't sit in a room by yourself and do, like, whatever, two, 20 one-act plays or one-man one, one man shows, you know. No. And Well, you, you expect, can. You can, but there's you have really nothing to show for it, you know. You don't have anything to show for it, except... Well, now now you have the YouTube. Yeah, yeah, and there are some people who have done great things, and, and yeah. who I really enjoy watching. Uh, yeah, and it's really pretty awesome that 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 avenue is it's a new avenue. So maybe she should become a TikToker. You know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I I I think that it was it was just funny because it's like I thought I thought based on his question that I didn't know any I couldn't offer him any information. Then I realized, oh, it's because his question is based on such ignorance, right? That so then I I said you know what she's nuts and actually tell your friend to t tell your your friend to lock up her daughter. Well, uh, Bill and I were chatting about how hard it is to stay creative 
you know, because he's you know he spent so much time on on that movie, uh, Dave Made a Maze, and and it's a great calling card, and he's gotten jobs out of it, but it hasn't like turned into ma- the, a massive success, you know. Right. And uh, and so I'm sure that's frustrating for him, and and we're he it's was, frustrating for me. Uh, yeah. Because you love it so much. Yeah. And he was saying, like, it's like just maintaining that intensity of commitment and of like, you know, I just remember in our in our late 20s just being like, oh, what are you doing this weekend? Oh, we're going to go shoot some sketches. You know, we, we got for access to someone's office and we're just going to go shoot there. And you spend all weekend shooting and then you spend all week cutting stuff and, and it's like super fun and you just don't even think about like other stuff. Mm-hmm. And now I'm just like, what are you doing this weekend? I'm going to sit around in my underwear and just put my hand down my, my um, you know, the front of it and just sit in there and watch TV, you know. Well, that could be creative. Uh, not the way I do it. Oh. So, yeah. And and it's just hard to think of like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go. Why, why do you think that is? Uh, because there are a lot of... When you're younger, you don't have as many responsibilities. Like, uh-huh. you know, I, I didn't have a mortgage. I didn't have a marriage. I didn't have, mm-hmm. um, I didn't have a career to build, you know, mm-hmm. or whatever I, I, to maintain. I had some only, I could only build. You right. Know? And, and also I'm surrounded by other people who have that same, that, those same goals. And, right. and that's kind of how the type of person I am. I will, I will match the energy of anybody in the room, but I won't necessarily, uh, uh, like lead that room, you know? Right. And, and that's, that's where someone like John Sylvain comes in because John Sylvain can lead a room and it's, yes. it's very infectious. And like, I've heard right. that guy's great. Yeah. And all of a sudden I'm like, why am I cleaning this bathroom? Oh, because he had a story about cleaning the bathroom. And yeah. Um, when have you cleaned the bathroom lately? Uh, no, that's actually, the thing is I just don't have the motivation. We actually to. hired people to clean the bathroom now. Nobody cleans well, that's the bathroom. How, that's how you made that. That's how you know you made it. Yeah, that's that's why I feel yeah. like I made it. Yes, at the theater, that 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 was a, a part of John's inspirational speech of you know cleaning the bathroom. Uh, it was actually paint the bathroom. Paint the bathroom. Yes. Basically, the idea was the theater. This theater belongs to you. If you want to paint the bathroom, paint the bathroom. And then very quickly, we said, no wait. After after the bathroom had been painted four or five times in various colors, we decided that wasn't such a great metaphor. But a better one comes from a story by. Uh, Glenn Berger, who uh, is a um, a playwright uh, who's pretty and a, and a screenwriter who's pretty successful, and he actually wrote the um, Spider-Man um, musical. Um, what's it called? What is it called? Spider-Man Into the Night. Somewhere? Into the Night. Yeah. Is that and, what it's called? Yeah, it's called Spider-Man Into the Night, and it was. Uh, and he also, more importantly and more impressively, wrote the book about the production of that, which. Uh, Apparently is a much better read than actually watching the the play. Oh, my brother in law saw it. He said it was the funniest thing he's ever seen. Yeah, like, yeah. Just like watching, you know, one of the actors just slam into a wall and just like, oh and, man, and it was just, yeah. Anyhow. What a nightmare. Yeah. So anyway, he 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 came out to um, uh, Annex Theater up in up in Seattle, uh, and um, he he told the story about going to the bathroom. And the first time, you know, first week he got there and, and looked down, and there was gum in the urinal. And he said, oh, that's gross. And then he came back in uh, a couple days later and went to the bathroom and the gum was in the urinal and said, they should do something about that. And then uh, it came back a, a week later and the gum was still there in the urinal. He said, we should do something about that. And then um, he came back uh, a week later and said, I should do something about that. And then... Like three or four weeks later, he did something about it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> he just used a different urinal. Oh no, he 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 picked it up. Yeah, and that's that was that was how you know, and that's basically you know that's a metaphor for life. You know, we should do something about this. It's too hot. We should so, you. We should do something about global warming. Warming, warning, warming, warning, 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 warning. Oh. So anyhow, John is smelling toast right now, and I'm going to go finish this one solo. So I think John, what John was saying is that no. I'm back. I'm back. Okay, I only only lost a little bit of my frontal lobe. Okay, yeah, it it is really uh, 
it's like the tragedy that commons. It's like it's so easy to hide behind the group. It's a little bit different, but you know, like yeah, we should all like make theater, but then part of making theater is cleaning the gum out of the urinal. You know, you know they they they've done studies about the. Uh, I don't remember what it's, it's some kind of effect. Basically, if there's a whole bunch of people and somebody says help, a whole bunch of people will not do anything mm-hmm. because they'll all assume somebody else would do it. The, the Kitty Genovese story. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, um, and in fact, that's it turns out that... That was not true. Least, most of that wasn't true. But yeah. what we're referring to is this apocryphal story that happened in New York in the 70s where uh, this woman was being murdered and she screamed and screamed and... Uh, a lot of people heard her, but nobody called the police because everyone was like, "Somebody else will call the police." Yeah, that, that's the the explanation of it. And and the and the uh, the law uh, the, the the moral of the story was that nobody in New York cares about their neighbors, when in fact a lot of people called the police. Yeah, that that is true. <laughs> yes, and and also that that effect is uh, doesn't mean people don't care. It just means that people don't take responsibility when there's a lot of people around. Mm-hmm. But when they're an individual and they they know it's up to them, they're much more likely to do something. Right, right, and that and that's been shown in behavioral psychology studies that I've read. So I believe it. <laughs> Is that what happened in Uvalde? With it the- must. Yeah, that's exactly what happened in Uvalde. Everyone was. I mean, that's the the thing is everybody. There were. I just heard about it. Uh, like I think it was this morning. Basically, there were there were there were border patrol, there were state cops, there were um, the 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 city cops and the school cops, and nobody knew who was in charge. Mm. And everybody was waiting around for somebody else to do something. Right, and and they they had a chance to shoot the guy right outside the the thing, and the guy who had him in his sights was waiting for the the oh, kill order. Go ahead, yeah, yeah. And and the funny terrible thing is that the 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 lesson is kill people as soon as possible. And it's like, well, I don't know. But definitely if you have body armor on and there's a whole bunch of kids in a classroom, you should burst in on the scene. But then well, you should the do other, something. Yeah. Well, the tragic thing, of course, is that most, almost, and actually, they wouldn't have saved any lives if they'd gone in faster. He killed He killed all the people that he killed before any cops got right. on the scene. So they, they stood, I mean, maybe maybe the, uh, the poor teacher who was bleeding to death might have been saved. Apparently, that's what I heard, but I don't think any it wouldn't have made it wouldn't have made any difference to the. But still, that type of inaction is reminds me of climate change. Yeah. Yes, and nobody wants to be inconvenienced. Nobody wants to put themselves at risk. Uh, well, everybody's waiting for orders. Mm. I think that's really what it is, I, and I think you know, I think that we as a species are much more. Um, like dogs, then um, we like to think we, you know, we they have like it. John Sylvain thinks you're a dog. Yeah, I do. I do. I think you're a dog. I yeah. mean, we've heard a lot of dogs with, with all those barking earlier. Was that those were our listeners? Those those are our, that, that wasn't in my head. No, that those were two live listeners. That wasn't a a uh, <clears throat> uh, what do you call it? A um, auditory uh, hallucination. Uh, uh, there's another stroke. Jesus. So many, so little time. Mm. So many brain cells, so little time. So, John, you have uh, always been doing something creative uh, for as long as I've known you. What What is your creative endeavor right now? Uh, I'm r- working on, I have a novel. I have two novels that I put out and the third one is done. So I, I, I've made a promise that I would um, get that out. So I've got to work on that. Um, and I'm... I'm, I, I wrote a, a pitch for, uh, I wrote a, I I've, I've have a couple of different projects, but I, I'm really excited about this this uh, sort of medieval story that takes place in 1189 uh, um, that involves Genghis Khan, Robin Hood, the Assassins, Knights Lisa Templar, Kudrow. Lisa Kudrow's in there, King Kong, um, the Kitchen Sink, mm-hmm. uh, Darth Vader. And um, your monkey's uncle. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, I'm working on. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm really excited about it. And uh, I got the pilot and the second episode written. I've got the. I got the whole Bible done. And um, I, I, I'm gonna. I'm turning it into prose. Um, so I can do an audio. Uh, so I can get it out no matter what. 
because mm-hmm. I kind of I'm I'm gonna try and send it out uh, with my manager, um, but I I kind of think that with no track record, it's a pretty expensive thing. So I I want to build an audience. I that's sort of my plan B. Gotcha. So I'm doing that, and then I'm editing, and so the the novel. Like, how many novels have you written? Two, right? Two. I've published two, two and published I have two. one more that I I need to. And do. this is part of the same series, then. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Now, how do you do you go about writing a novel? Like, I I read um, Stephen King's on writing, and basically mm-hmm. he just says like, all you got to do is sit with a pen and. Uh, and just keep writing. Yeah, well, that's all Stephen King has to do. Right. So if you want to write something, the first thing you do is read a lot, I think, um, so that you know how to write because you have read a lot, so you know about writing. Um, and then that's – but a lot of people I write. Mean, I, you know, a lot of people eat a lot, but they don't know shit about cooking. Yeah, and then then you, I, I, it really is the the first thing you have to do is you have to sit down and write, uh-huh. um, and then then you you get some people to read it and then you rewrite it. But now, do you like Stephen King is famous for not outlining, mm-hmm. and that's why you, you end up with a whatever eleven hundred page version of the stand. Mm-hmm. or however many pages it, it, the extended one was. Mm-hmm. Uh, and like he has a good idea and he's so good with characters and dialogue and he just goes. And yeah. then it ends up sort of meandering and petering out a lot of the time. Not always, but but um do you do it that way or do you have an a full outline with a beginning, middle and end? I think it's a combination of both and I don't believe that um Stephen King doesn't outline. I think he knows where he's going or thinks he knows where he's going. The thing is when you write, um there's a difference between, in my mind, there's a difference between this holistic idea yeah. of a cool world and a story that you might have in your head, mm-hmm. which is might is very vague and cool and stuff, and then you have to translate that into into uh, sentences that are linear. That it, that you know. So basically, your imagination is three dimensional, and 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 writing is actually like almost one dimensional sort of two dimensional it's on a page but it really is one letter at a time you know what i mean so you have to choose whose point like what sentences what the sentence is going to say and how are you going to describe and where the people are and how you're going to describe whatever situation and then you have to put those you don't you don't have you can't it's not uh, uh, a holistic universe you know what i mean so so when you're doing that you you learn what you about your characters, that's you know you learn uh, what you, what's really there and what's in your head, mm-hmm. and um, and so I think that's why when writers say you know they they started to follow a character, I mean that's happened to me. I have this idea about a character and I start writing them, and then I think about their as they're talking. I think well they could say this could be their backstory as as they're talking, not like I wrote it, wrote it all beforehand. Mm. Like I have a friend who who uh, has a lot of great ideas, but they're more like D&D worlds than novels. Right. Like he right. can go on and on and on about describing the, the environment. The Shire, the... Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, yeah. the depths of Mordor, but... Um, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. Like, so w- you wrote a Bible for this this project that you're working on. Yeah. Do you ri- did you write one for the Space Elevator one, a Bible? No, I just I just wrote it. You just it. wrote it. So the purpose of a Bible is more of a TV thing, right? Yeah. And that is so that everybody, it's like a source of truth so that everybody who's working on it knows oh, what's I going on. The, 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 there's two different kinds of Bibles. Okay. Um, there's a Bible for a show that's actually on, with, and, then, and it's a science fiction or... And even, then there's Gideon's Bible. Right. No, that would be, that would be like, okay... We're, we have a room full of writers, and we're going to write everything we know about each character so that, um, and we're going to keep track of all the things that have been established or whatever. You know, that's the Star Trek or Star Wars or. Right, you right. Know, like Star Trek. Star Wars has a, you know, they have their own, like, whatever, like Bible Keeper or whatever. Yeah. And I just, I just when I saw Thor, they, there's a, a group of five people called the Marvel Parliament. 
Oh yeah. You know, so I, I, I think that I don't know, but I think that those are the people who are in charge of making sure that nobody um crosses the there's the lines or right, whatever. Right, right. But um the Bible for a pitch is is really just a a a document that makes your project sound really cool. Um and then you outline or you, you describe every episode in the first season and then you describe the second season in, in a in a page and the third season and the fourth season just so they like the they like the pilot and they have they can see your vision. Yeah. In a very they can see the vision. They can see your vision and right. they can say, you know what we, we could buy this project and turn it into something better. <laughs> <laughs> and give it to, to you know that that writer. Yeah. The real writer. A real writer. <laughs> No, uh, but it was interesting. Uh, what's his name? Ryan uh, Johnson. Like I, I was watching an, an interview with him, and and he was talking about how he writes. And he who's Ryan Johnson? He he did the the seventh Star Wars uh, number eight. Oh, Ra- oh yeah, Ryan. Yeah, uh, Ra- I'm, I'm sorry. It's Ra- It's R I N. I can never. I always think it's sort of like Ryan. But it's oh, I'm sorry. I should have said Ryan. Yeah, exactly. Sorry. My, I, I'm, that is on me, and this is, I need to learn how to enunciate. Oh, there goes another sorry, stroke. I should have said Ryan, Ryan uh, Johnson. Yeah. Then I said Ryan. Yeah. So, uh, so Ryan Johnson was saying, uh, clear? Yeah. Okay. Uh, that he, when he starts, he basically does a little graph, and he... And how can I disagree with J.J. Abrams? That's what he starts with? Uh, yes. Yeah. He's like, a graph, and where he... Makes a very orderly circle and a slash through it, and <laughs> on top of J.J. Abrams' face. Right. Uh, no, I, I thought he did a great job, but he uh, and it's like having a these like curves there, like he can put on these curves all the the plot points, the yeah. be- beats, and so that like what you're talking about about like one thing is world building and the other thing is telling a story and this uh, story is dynamic and you're trying to to take the audience on a ride the ups and the downs uh-huh. and so when you when you actually graph it it's like oh yeah this you know and of course it it changes of course you know this is just these are place settings places you know just like pins and that you can move but at least you have pins in place and so yeah. and because you're you're cognizant of the audience's ride and not about the verisimilitude of your world, you know? Right. But that's a movie too. But I think the same holds true in books. It not might, necessarily. Well, it might not be, oh, well, it depends on what kind of novel you're writing, but, but if you're telling, you know, the stories that you like the elevator, the space elevator yeah. thing is, is a very story driven. Right. Very plot driven. I'm talking about something that's plot driven. Yeah. Yeah. As yeah. opposed to a historical novel about, you know, the tulip trade in in Holland in the 16th century, you know, like like that. Or 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 more modern move, books about uh, you know people. <laughs> me, 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 me. Uh, so while we're talking about books, I, I, there's a couple books I want to I want to. I read. Um, speaking of people who I went to school with, uh, there was a guy named oh, uh, Amor Tours. Okay. I think. Go uh, easy my back. It's hard for me to pick up the names you drop, but uh, I don't know him. Age. I don't. Okay. I don't know any of these people. All right, all right. Um, and, uh, Wait, I'm sorry, what was his name again? I was trying to make it. more Tours, joke. I think. Okay. He wrote, uh, a gentleman in, Mo- our gentle- gentleman in Moscow. Okay. And he just, and he wrote, um, Lincoln Highway. Okay. I gotta look up, I'm getting his name wrong. Anyway, I just read those and they're really very, very, both very, 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 very good. And, um, and this other, I'm reading books by Kate Atkinson and she's fantastic. Um, and then. Uh, I just finished uh, a book that I can't. I, it's so hard to describe. I got to figure out what the the name of it is. But it's um. Basic. Can you imagine a book in which you have a transsexual uh, runaway, and you have uh, aliens who have taken over a donut shop in La Mirada, uh, La Puente, and oh. I was with you with not La Mirada, but no, La Puente, no. No, I, I, I cannot envision that. El Monte. It's El Monte. Oh, okay. That makes sense. That makes sense. <laughs> and, and, and then there's a a also tired, and then there's a, a violin teacher who's made a deal with the devil to deliver souls. And all of that is in one novel, and it is a heartbreaking work of staggering genius where you're totally involved with the characters. It was, it's it's an it's amazing uh, and I gotta figure out what what it's called because 
Because I got to people, people have got to uh, read it. it, it? Oh, I mean, people know about it. It 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 won the Hugo. That's why I read it. Okay, we'll wait. Yeah, no, I wouldn't wait. I think we should talk about something else. Well, what I was that? It. What was that play that Circle X did with the cat and Judas and? Uh, oh, uh, Master and Margarita. Master and Margarita. That's the 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 uh, Ukrainian. Um, that uh, that didn't make no sense to me. It didn't make any sense to you? No, I wasn't a huge fan. You didn't like it? I was all right. Um, okay. Well, it, 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 that's one of the great novels of um, uh, Ukraine. Tyson Ukraine. Put, put a link to the space elevator on Twitter. Holy smoke. Thank you, Tyson. You Thanks, are a Tyson. mensch. That is, uh, Tyson, did you read it? Tyson, did you read it? It's one part of the, the Blink's Adventures. So um, there's two. There's there's two out. There's the space elevator and the uh, the space academy, and then the last one is the space marine, and uh, that'll be out by Christmas. Oh, all right, great. Uh, JP, I have not. I, I will see the bear. Uh, it it does sound really good. It, it is right good. My I just started. I just started. Yeah. And uh, I did. And he mentions that it can get intense and claustrophobic without getting too overwhelming. Beautifully shot. Yeah, it, d- it does have a, a really naturalistic looking feel, which I, I really appreciate. <clears throat> yeah. I, w- I started watching I Love That For You because I, the place I, the residence in New Orleans had Showtime for free. Uh, oh, wow. That, yeah. That, and that was uh, very funny, but it made me really uncomfortable um, at a certain point because. Um, Vanessa Bear plays somebody uh, who gets herself in trouble, and it just made me uneasy. But it's she's really great. Who? And Vanessa Bayer, she was on SNL. She was a co-creator of the show. Oh. Uh, yeah. And and um, what's her name is in it? Um, Sister Catherine, what's her name? Um, not Sister Catherine, but whatever. The, uh, Catherine from SNL. Yeah. Um, yeah, Molly Shannon. Molly Shannon. Yeah, and she's great in it too. It's it's really well done show. It it you would think that it it's about a, a, a cancer survivor who has a dream to be basically on the home shopping network as a salesperson, and uh, and it's about her achieving that dream. And you would think that they would just make fun of things because mm-hmm. that would be so easy. Mm-hmm. But it's actually really, really thoughtfully done, and it's done from a lot of like love for this that world, which I, I appreciate. Uh, yeah, and it's a rich world for for comedy for sure. Uh, so, any luck with the name of that book? No, there's a way to find out what I what I've borrowed from the library, and uh, I can't figure out how to do it. Okay. Well, you you don't know. You're afraid of technology, so that, that's fair. I mean, we you established that early on in the podcast. So. Um, yeah, it's uh, something stars, some stars thing. Okay. Yeah. Um, when when did it win a Hugo? La- Light from Uncommon Stars. There you go. Light from un- Uncommon Stars, Rika Aoki. <clears throat> and. Okay. Uh, and it is, let me see if there's any information on here. It says "Good Omens" meets "The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet." That's that's not. That's this is just from this year. It won. Yeah. Wow. Uh, and it, it is not um, totally crazy, and and I mean, it sounds like it's totally crazy, but is it? It's not. I mean, it's not the. Uh, um, actually. Long way to a small angry planet and good omens. It, that's pretty good. It's just very well written too. I yeah. mean, it's it's it combines so many things that just it just seems like it wouldn't work, but it just totally works. Cursed violins, Faustian bargains, and queer alien courtship over fresh made donuts. I mean, that's how does it work? Like how does it work? You mm-hmm. just well that the, that the pro, you 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 care about the characters. You like she very. Um, I think it's a she. Care about the characters. You care. That's care is the first part of character. So that's that should be your first clue as a writer. I don't know if it's the same route. Care. <laughs> I don't want to shit on you any more than I normally do. Raptors. <laughs> it's care and actors together. Oh yeah, yeah. Care, you're caring for your actors. Oh, care for your I actors. See. And there you go. Yeah, and then prose is p and o's. So you want to. Pay attention to that as well. 
And then setting is set and ting. You were doing so well with characters. Yeah. So you care, you care about your actors. You care about your characters, mm. and um, they seem rich, and you can believe in them. And that's done by having uh, describing the characters well, using uh, you know descriptive language, using words well, which is something that I can't do, mm-hmm. um, and and ev- evoking sort of feelings that you can understand about people that are different from you. And then, well, at the same time, without getting sort of bogged down in that, because you have your plot that you have, you, you want to move forward. So right. you, so you, and you mix tough, in... Tough balancing. Yeah, act. it's very, it's hard. Yeah. You can easily, like, get, go off on a digression and think about, you know, um, uh, say, for instance, you have a macaroon that somebody eats, and then all of a sudden you've written 40,000 words about the per- character's memories, which actually was a good idea. That's... That's basically what happens in uh, Remembrance of Things Past by Marcel Proust. Proust. Uh-huh. Um, but that's, I mean, that's all description. That's all just character description. All, I mean, things happen in that, but I, 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 and I've read a lot of it, but I can't tell you really what happens. Swan's Way, which is the first book, the, the, the title is about the way that, the family goes on a walk. They go, let's go Swan's Way. Every night the family goes on a walk. So you can imagine how much action is in Swan's Way. And it hasn't been turned to a movie. Go <laughs> figure. I, I might have been turned into a movie. Yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah, we'll never know. Uh, so anyhow, uh, Raika Aoki is a trans woman. Oh, well, yeah. okay, great. Yep. So um, that's, that's uh, writing from... I'm sure a bit of experience, life experience. It it it, it made me want to listen to Bar Talk. It's, oh, it's so evocative. Mm-hmm. So it's and all right. I, I'm pretty sure she's a violin player as well. Cool. She knows. She Seems knows. like it because she knows what she's talking. She's probably an alien as well. A black belt in judo. Oh well, that didn't come up. Yep. So did, did, did she write any other books? I don't think. Oh yeah. Yep. Anyway, this is this is others. great. Um, and uh, I, I highly recommend it. All right, that's the everyone's homework then. Uh, all right, cool. Oh, have you read anything lately that you like? I read um, Spiderhead. Spiderhead. Oh Spiderhead, yeah. Spiderhead. Whatever. Did I mention that before? Yeah, I you did. Yeah, what? Okay. Uh, well, no, I haven't read anything. To, that's like the first. I I don't read. You don't read. Yep. You know how to read though, right? Sure. It says Alex Award. Did it win? Did they win a, a, a Hugo? Yes, it, it did. did. Yeah. So um, I I did see the Gray Man, which is like crazy that they spent two hundred million dollars on that. I think that's the the new Ryan uh, um, Gosling Gosling film. They spent two hundred million dollars on it. Yeah, yeah. It's like the you know the the Russo brothers on. It'll be on Netflix on Friday, I think. But it came out in theaters. Oh, really? Yeah. And was it good? It was so forgettable. I mean, they, he's he's a fine actor, and uh, Ryan Gosling. Yeah. And, well, and Anna Diarmas is in it, and um, Chris who? At, Anna Diarmas. She was in Knives Out. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Oh. Yeah. You know, Rian, Rihanna Johnson's movie. Yeah. And then. Um, <laughs> and you mean Ryan? Chris Evans is in it as well, and. Yeah, but it's just like the most generic story. It's like, it's a hitman, you know, on the run from people, and it's it's like. Well, it's I, like, I, I can't remember really call any movies with that plot before. Yeah. yeah well, so they spent two hundred million dollars on it. Yeah, it's a lot of donuts. A, yeah. So, um, and what a terrible name. Yeah. The Gray Man. Yeah. I mean, it's not even on my radar at all, and I love action movies. Yeah. I don't like Ryan Gosling. Really? Hmm. Well, I think uh, he's. I no. I guess I, I. I once saw a video that compared compared him to a plant, and I said fair. Um, but like he played Neil Armstrong. This is this is uh, who who directed uh, Whiplash and and uh, can't remember anybody's name anymore. No, apparently not. Who directed Whiplash? Uh, that guy. I have to, do I have to look it up? Or no, I'll look it up. Gonna, you know, you keep. Why don't you keep talking? And when right, you so, talk, I will look it up. Okay. So up. the guy who directed Whiplash, Damien Chazelle. Damien Chazelle. He also directed La La Land, and he also directed First Man. 
And uh, La La Land, he made a, a musical about Hollywood. And La La Land was a, a fine little film. Um, but Whiplash and First Man do two things that I think are unbelievable. They are just both do something that I didn't think I could ever see. Whiplash makes a jazz drum solo emotionally interesting, which is astonishing. And then in First Man, he does... To make it, space boring? Yes, he makes space boring. Well, I mean, you can't hear anything in space. It's cold, you know? Hmm, yeah. that's true. It does no. you, you do it. You're making it sound boring. Yeah, but then you see that picture from that telescope. Yeah, that is pretty, pretty cool, amazing. huh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so... But um, he was in La La Land. Did you, did you not like him in La La Land? Well, I I I don't think he's he's strangely not dynamic. I mean, he's a movie star, and he just doesn't. He seems sort of like you know. Hey, yeah, well, yeah, hi, just sitting here and uh, on wow, the spot on. You should audition for SNL. Yeah, here's my like Ryan Gosling. Hey, everybody. Aww. I'm just going to sit here and play the piano. He's our Canadian friend. Oh, that explains it. Yeah. He's Canadian. Oh. Yawn. Wow. Yeah, I just pissed off like five or six people. And the entire population of Canada? Yeah, and they're going to be like, wow, eh? Uh, have you watched Mythic Quest? Yeah, that's awesome. Oh. Yeah, right. you should watch Mythic Quest. Everybody, uh, Mythic Quest, that's a good show. That is a good show. Uh, well, here's what JP says. He says, uh, episode mm-hmm. two, six, or season two, episode six of Mythic Quest is a cool 1970s period piece where mm-hmm. passionate sci-fi writer has the world-building problem mm-hmm. you, you were talking about and can't yeah. understand why humans evolving a pouch isn't automatically compelling. Handles criticism with more detail. That's really funny. I love the people who... Who, in reaction to like just basic criticism, are just like, "Well, you don't get it. Let me explain it to you." As opposed to, "Oh, okay, I, I you know, like they, there's no sense of digesting what somebody is criticizing." You know, yeah, well, what, it's hard to, it's hard, it's it's easy to to as I mean, I always tell people whenever I give them any criticism, or if, especially when I'm writing, working, uh, doing a workshop. Mm-hmm. Um, where people are going to get feedback, I say, okay, now here's the thing. You are the writer, so you can go off and ignore this or not. I do not want to get into an argument with you about right. any of these notes. Right. So just take the notes and do not respond. But there's some people who just, you have to train yourself to to, to take criticism. Yeah. You know? it's, a, it's, a, it's a skill, as well it is, as it is to give constructive criticism. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we have not learned either of those skills on this podcast. If, if you've what do you been mean? listening, for, what are you talking about? I don't think that's true. Did you not no. hear what I just said? No, no, you, you didn't hear what I just said. Okay, no, calm down. Hey, you're, I'm you're, calm. You're no, the one you're, who's just you're, you're attacking obviously me. Obviously, not calm. I mean, uh, I think okay. any objective yeah, okay. observer just, would come okay. in and say, "Open your fucking ears." You know, see? and this is what I'm saying. What right I'm saying. there. Did you see what okay. I just said? I have. Do you hear what? Did you hear what you just said? Didn't hear what I said. Did you hear what I said? Did you hear what you said and how it was exactly what I said? See, I won because he stopped talking. Damn it. Yeah. All right. And th- th- see, that was an object lesson. That was irony, ladies and gentlemen, in case you were worried. It was supposed to be kind of funny. It wasn't comedy. It was, really, <laughs> it was really kind of uncomfortable. It's a little bit on the nose and because it reflects a lot of the actual conflict that's happened on this podcast. Well, don't tell anybody that we actually felt those feelings. Ixnay on the conflict, K. Okay. Can anybody hear us when we talk like this? <laughs> Nobody hears us at all. Nobody hears us. Uh, yeah. Hey, uh, if you uh, if you are listening in uh, out there in uh, podcast land, please send us an email. Yeah. Noonerpodcast at gmail.com. I hit refresh. I hit refresh. I hit refresh. <laughs> no, no. I'm hitting refresh and refresh. We're still waiting. Refresh. This is me on a, a, a on a dating site before I got married. <laughs> refresh, refresh, refresh. 
One more refresh. Okay, my five son, more, and son, then I go to bed. My son apparently is on dating apps, and he says he and his friends say that L.A. is a vast wasteland. Oh yeah, there are no people here, no single people here in well, L.A. I, that's their experience. Mm. But if you saw them, I think you'd understand. I've seen your offspring, and your offspring is a delight. He who? Yes, he is a delight. Yeah. Uh, all right. Why don't we wrap up early? I I'm early. Still, yeah, I thought we were going for like three hours. Oh, we can. We can. Do you have anything on in your? In your, you, here's what I would like to to know. You, you, we tasked ourselves with, uh, or we task each other with things to do. Yeah. And one of yours was to write a love song. Yeah. And did you record it? No. Okay, but you I, did write it. I will. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I will record it. Right. And I'll bring it in next time, week. and then, uh, and then let's come up with ones new ones to assign to each other. All right. Okay. And hopefully Cassandra will be back next week. And mine is, uh, John, you have to go out and get COVID. Um, okay. Yep. You have to take this glass and you have to put it in your mouth. Oh. All the way. That's easy. Um, all right. And, uh, I used to be able to do this. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, don't. Oh, oh don't. Oh, oh. I'm not going to do it. Don't do that. Yeah. Um, I once saw a horrible thing on the internet um, that you involved break. a glass and somebody putting something uh, uh, an object in themselves. Okay. All right. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Yeah, that was just that was when I realized the internet was evil. Yeah. Yeah. When um, was that? Last night? No, this is like twenty five years ago. Um, like, yeah, that was that was bad. That that stuck with me for a while. It stuck yeah. with that guy too. Am I right? <laughs> That's um, terrible. Well, terrible. Right. So, nope. Speaking of. Uh, oh nope. yeah, nope. that's coming out this week. It uh, is. Yeah, it's coming oh, out on the twenty second. I hope it's good. I hope it's good too. The it looks good. Yeah, it's really hard because right now the only reports, the feedback is just from people on Twitter being like, "At you know uh, Jordan Peele, you're amazing. That was so fucked up and awesome and cool." So I don't think that's a real review. And even if that was what. That's what, because the screening was on last night. Oh, it so, was? Yeah. And so uh, there are no reviews out yet, but there, you know, are people reacting to that. Oh, okay. I'm uh, sorry. I did not explain myself well at all. Okay. Which is typical. So, yes, that is coming out. And I'm very, um, yeah, that is the, the big, the big release that's, that everyone's looking forward to. So that, and it's supposedly very visually spectacular. So that'll be fun to see. Oh, good. In the theater. Yeah. Well, um, cause the. The trailers don't seem like particularly. They seem it's a good movie, but they, I guess they probably kept the spectacular visuals off the because it's probably gives away something. We, uh, yeah, they they don't. But I, you know, you see that those big western vistas, and you're like, oh yeah, 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 and and you're like, oh, that's pretty impressive. That that. Um, I didn't see us. Did you see us? Yeah, I, I was not a huge fan of it, but Elizabeth Moss is really funny in it. She's really good. Um, she's she's the treasure. Yeah, oh, she, yeah, she's great, um, and she has a very small part. But I did not. I thought that it was a not a great. It, there's a lot of problems with it, but it was an interesting. We're gonna idea. dip into oh, the mail. Oh my sack. god, what? Mail what? Sack. What? what? Mail what? Sack. I thought we were done. Done. Up. Fuck. Hit the. What? what? Uh, yeah, that was great. We have a last minute email that just came in. You're kidding me. No, I, I kid you not. Wow, that's great. Yeah, this is from JP Cutter, who's just up the road in, in the valley. Hi, JP. Hi, JP. We have to get you back here. Uh, he has a very short email. Yeah. It says, I'm almost a year into a run playing Cookie Clicker. What? Cookie Clicker. Which what? is, it's, it's one of these casual video games. Uh-huh. And uh, you... Just Make cookies? No, you you click uh, a a cookie on a screen, which and every time you c- click it, you earn a cookie, uh-huh. and then you just it's one of these. It's making me hungry. Yeah, it's like uh, just a casual game. It's one of those you know games that you sit while you're like waiting in line at the bank. You know. Yeah. Uh, and I I've not played it, but he says, do you allow yourself any vices that are almost defiantly time-wasting. Yes. Yes. Everything I do is like defiantly time-wasting. Yeah. I uh, just hit a uh, 102 days doing the New York 
times crossword puzzle in a row. Um, really? Yeah. That that's Did it. you finish it? Yeah, yeah. Doing you it finished it every day? For 102 days. Holy smoke. You you got a lot of time on your hands. I, I, like I said, defiantly time-wasting. Mm-hmm. And and I've also been doing the, the Spelling Bee, you know, which is the little other game that they have. Yeah. New York Times and Wordle. Um, so that's like, that's what I do at like three in the morning when I'm just like waiting for sleep to set in. Uh, and wow. Yeah. So uh, that's something. And, and then I've been playing... Um, Hades and I derive no joy from playing Hades but I've been what's that it's a video game it's like one of these what they call a, a roguelike uh, game rogue roguelike and basically it every it's sort of computer generated the way that all the options and things that, that come up but the game is basically the same every time you know and there's a little bit of a story in it but the idea is that because it's it's computer generated, it's there's constant variety, but it's not really. That Is much it? Variety. Uh, it's an action ca- game. It's a first person shooter. Or? No, it's uh, it's more like a uh, I don't know. It's like a whatever. You're looking over someone going through a little maze kind of thing. Oh, kind of like the same angle as like Diablo or something like that, but it's very fast paced and and. Um, you take no pleasure in it, but you do it anyway. Yeah, it's because like work defiantly time wasting. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Fuck so, you, Marty. I'm going to take your body and I'm going to go do this. It's a, I get a tiny, tiny bit of dopamine rush just and, by just, wasting your own time. Just, just enough to to get to pass time. Yeah. Yeah. How about yourself? Good. I uh, play words with friends. I get my ass kicked in words with friends. You haven't kicked my ass in words with. Friends. I haven't like, played it too for boring. Like a, a couple of years. Yeah. Um, Marty is really good at words with friends, but I'm also really bad. I was talking to a friend who always kicks my ass and he says it's because you don't play defensively and you actually go for the beauty of the game rather yes than yeah you're not interested in winning at all no well i am but i i also would rather make the next move easier for everyone it's really Aww. Not, not very smart oh no, um, not smart at all and then uh yeah I, I also play two dots which is um uh a little bit of a, a clever puzzle game and um what else do I do? I play Wordle and Nerdle and Worldle. Okay, great. Yeah, but those are quick. Um, I'm very and, proud of how quick they are. But I, you know what? The, yeah, I'm sorry. You're, yeah, no. Yeah. Uh, uh, Words with friends takes up about a half hour of my time every day. Oh, there you go. I think JP is just he just sent this to us just to fuck with us. No, I, I think uh, I think just, he like, loves us. Oh, just try to, just have a little crumb. A cookie clicker, just 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 a just a taste, and then you think I'm going to start. Do that? Yeah. Oh, you cookie think? clicker, cookie clicker. Okay. Go to your the app store now. Uh, go, I'm going to the app store now. You got them, JP. You got them. High six, five. Six, oh, I just I just said the my password for my phone out loud as I typed it. No, well nobody's that was nobody dumb. can lift your phone because it's so full of stuff. <laughs> Should I? I accidentally. I wonder if adaptation is a good book. Yeah. Wait, you mean the one that the no the the, the it just the I just ac- accidentally no it's oh. it's some some other book that's recommended by people who like the book I just said Light from Uncommon Stars oh this is what somebody said uh, let's see um, I love the idea of Dave made a maze so much that I wrote a song about it guess what it was about Dave made a maze it's called uh, Tyson made a song about Dave made a maze that's clever. Yeah, I don't know what it's called, then, but I, thanks that would, for sending in uh, the the emails. Guys. Yes, thank you, JP. That that is uh, <laughs> that is did awesome. Ty, did Tyson send us an email too, or is that no? That that that's all. Did we JP got. write that song? Who wrote the song about Tyson? When I said Tyson made a song about yeah. Dave made a maze. Yeah, was that t- on Twitter? Or that's what? yeah, but that was Tyson who who made the song. Okay, I, I you you gotta speak more slowly. <laughs> Ryan. Oh, I'm sorry, Tyson. You mean Tyson. Ryan. When you said Tyson, you meant Tyson. I meant Ryan Johnson oh, made Ryan a movie Johnson. about Tyson Saner. <clears throat> yeah, it was called Making Brick? a Song uh, About Dave Made a Maze. Was it Brick? Was that a... T- yeah, that's one of his movies. It's not the movie I just mentioned. Dave Folds 5. Was it, what's his name? Ben Folds, ben Folds five. 5. Yeah. Kate Folds' husband? Kate Folds' ex-husband. Yes. yes. Do you remember Kate Folds? I do remember Kate. That's how she, I knew that they were he took her. Exes. He took her name. Yeah. No. 
I think her name was Engelbretson. Okay. Cool. Well, maybe that's someone else. All right, we're talking about nonsense right now that oh, nobody the, cares this about. Is, this is the, the, no, the no, theater no. people. Oh, that, yeah, yeah. This exactly. is a we're talking about old theater people. <laughs> yeah, what's Paul Plunkett up to these days? Uh, All right. Same stuff. Okay. Good. Uh, he, what was his name? Engendered. 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 Species. Engendered species. Do you remember he did that two, two-hander? Uh, yeah. Uh, it was yes. really, really funny. Yes. It was wildly funny. And I was yes. like, why well, didn't, well, that, sh- that should be done constantly. That was a great, yes. great, great, great play. Yes. Um, but yes. Uh, it was like, yes. It was like going through time with these two characters. And, and Do you really remember, uh, speaking okay. of old shows that no one will ever see, we, City of Angles? Uh, I didn't see it. Oh, it was right. a crime scene. It was the best one ever. Oh, okay. Well, we'll talk about it offline. Um, cause I want to talk about it, but I'd also don't want to bore people about something that they'll never see or understand because <laughs> why not? I don't know. That's like We're talking about our, 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 you know, pay for that beach house in Malibu. Uh, okay, so send us your if you have proposals of things that you want to pimp us out to do. You yeah. know, like write a song, learn tie dye, walk walk uh, the dogs, walk the dogs. Um, or if you have questions for us, book recommendations, any sort of media recommendations. Uh, Humphrey, you want to take a loud dog? Um, Humphrey, Bruno. Uh, that's noonerpodcast at gmail.com. Uh, you can tweet at us too, but it's better to tweet at us while we're doing this live because my attention span is really short because I have, I've, I've been playing uh, Cookie Clicker for the past f- four minutes and I cannot stop. So I can't concentrate anymore. I know. I can never concentrate to begin with. So uh, next week, hopefully, Cassandra will be back. Um, I owe, let's all pray. Yes, let's all pray for that. Uh, I'm going to check in with Steve to see if he ever, he ever wants to come back because, you know, we miss Steve. And uh, maybe we'll have other people on. I don't know. Who knows what's going on? But I, uh, oh, and uh, uh, yeah. So anyhow, we'll, we'll, we'll talk later and we will see you next Tuesday. Tuesday for a hamburger today. What? Damn it, I can't do anything right. This is not right. You know, no. Why, this is, why are you this saying is that Rum. like that's new? Yeah. <laughs>